Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our re-engineering the chess classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and in this video we are going to take a look at a great game between Alexander Aliekin and Paul Saladin Leonard. And um, well this video is actually the start of a series on Paul Saladin Leonard. Who was he? Well, quite an active player in the um, uh, in the early 1900s. Um, very attacking, very tactical, um, but unfortunately also, well, for him, quite uh, accident prone. I um, I had a look at a game of his in this series. In actual fact, it was between David Janowski and uh, Leonard, and it was a great tactical game that uh, where Leonard eventually made the um, uh, the last blunder and um, actually I got triggered to uh, look at some more games by uh, a Twitter friend called Iris who recommended this book The Gessner Meister in German so I've struggled a little bit but uh, haven't done too badly with uh, uh, some translating software and um, it deals with uh, a number of lesser known players so there's um, Leonard uh, Rotlevy who's uh, best known for his loss to Rubinstein but was um, uh, a very, very strong player, a future star, uh, but died uh, tragically young. Uh, Sultan Khan, um, Petrov and Elis Garcis. So those are the, the players that, uh, that the author looks at. Um, yeah, Leonard, great player, um, but um, as I said, accident prone. Um, yeah, very poor finishing technique, which means he messed up a lot of very good games. Um, so the words, uh, oh no, and oh my goodness, and oh, are going to feature quite heavily in this series, but uh, well worth looking at. So let's have a look how this game went. Uh, so this was played between uh, Aliekin and uh, Leonard in 1910 in Hamburg. So it's it's a young Alekin, which means um, uh, already very strong, but yeah, tendency to overdo things. He only really found his range and, uh, you know, the balance between um, aggression and um, and uh, and overdoing things. You know, I think much later in life, you know, towards the, the mid 1920s, really. Um, uh, here, you know, in the 1910s, he was still uh, feeling his way and um, and sometimes playing much too sharply. So d4, d5, knight f3, and then c5. Most aggressive way to um, to meet two knight f3. And here white's got quite a few possibilities. I mean, uh, c4 is uh, possible, transposing to the uh, back to the queen's gambit, uh, the main lines. Uh, g3 is quite interesting. C takes d4. And then um, you play the move bishop g2, and you're looking to, uh, to capture on d4 later and uh, play some sort of deferred Grunfeld. A black can also throw in queen a5 check just to disrupt things a little bit and try and uh, win a pawn there. Quite interesting lines. There's also c3 or e3, but uh, Aliakin played one of the major ideas, which is d takes c5. Knight f6 and then e3. I mean, you could try and play some sort of reversed uh, semi-slav, Mr. Veeds. Just for you, uh, you know, play c3, b4, try and hold on to the pawn. I've looked at these lines quite a bit, but um, here uh, Aliakin just plays a reversed queen's gambit accepted. So uh, a3, bishop c5, c4. And uh, yeah, I mean, this isn't very much for white, but it's perfectly decent. And an extra tempo is always going to help a little bit. So castles from um, Leonard and um, now um, knight c3 from uh, Aliakin. I, I would have preferred to play the move uh, b4. And then play bishop b2, knight bd2. Always like having my knight on d2 in these uh, in these lines. But knight c3 is quite reasonable. And we see the idea after queen e7, b4. Um, black would normally want to play the bishop back to d6 in these structures. It covers e5. And uh, when you later play a5 to undermine the queen side, the bishop sort of pointing already at the, at the weak pawns. Um, but here, probably, uh, Leonard was a little bit afraid of knight b5, just netting the bishop pair, which, you know, is a bit of a shame, really, to uh, just give that away, especially with the, uh, you know, the center quite open like that. So um, bishop b6 played, and now bishop b2, and then Leonard, very typical for his style, straight away provokes a conflict and attacks the queenside pawns. So what um, should White do here? Well, um, I've been analysing this with uh, with Torch version two uh, for now, um, but um, I've also uh, just received. Thank you so much, uh, Andrew Grant, uh, version three. So um, I'm just going to have a little look to see how um, how that's uh, doing. But um, Torch likes uh, the move B5 here. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, you are weakening the c5 square, but you're going to have ideas like knight a4 hitting the bishop on b6. And, uh, well, black's development is a little bit um, awkward. You know, the b5 pawn takes away c6 from the knight. Um, if the bishop goes to d7, then the knight can't go there. If the knight goes to d7, then the bishop is uh, sort of a little blocked. So, you know, it, it's um, black's got to work hard, a little bit hard, really, to uh, to get developed there. Um, for example, this was torch against uh, Stockfish, a game, um, rook d8, queen c2, knight bd7, knight a4, bishop c5 was what Stockfish came up with. But, you know, black's, white's going to get the, uh, I mean, what black's aiming for is after bishop e2 to go b6 here. But, I mean, we take off, we take off here and uh and just claim white just claims that uh that uh, the two bishops are uh are for white and uh, you know that's just um a little edge there uh, also possibilities for the knight to come around attack the pawn on b6 i'd be pretty happy with white really if i had uh, you know this sort of um this sort of position so um that was what um torch prefers but uh, alekin uh, played c5 most aggressive and then bishop d8 from uh, Leonard. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, bishop c7 feels more natural again, but you, you'll get hit by knight b5. So um, bishop d8, bishop e2 from uh, Aliekin, and now b6. Leonard again, you know, really uh, playing very aggressively, not letting uh, white consolidate at all, hitting there straight away. Now, quite a few uh, possibilities here. Um, knight a4 was quite interesting. Stockfish against Torch. Uh, takes knight takes c5 just trying to get a knight on a, on an outpost here it's nothing amazing but it's uh, it's definitely okay um i think torch was uh, just playing castles and then e5 here you know just uh, just a, a nice struggle in prospect really you know white's got some queenside uh, space and an outpost on c5 black's got the center somehow it's really like you know white and black are playing opposite sides here but of course, you know, with the pawns opened and the uh, the C file open as well, yeah, black doesn't have a particularly stable square for the knight on uh, on B8. So yeah, you know, quite uh, interesting play there uh, possible. You know, probably black will uh, try and develop the bishop first and then bring the knight out uh, later. Um, but uh, Aliakin played uh, C takes B6 here, and um, well. It got quite sharp. A takes B4. A takes B4. Rook A1. Queen A1. And now, um, yeah, Leonard always going to make it the sharpest possible, took on b4 with the queen. And the uh, the engines don't like that at all. What the engines want is either bishop b6 or, you know, knight bd7 first, castles, and then bishop b6. Just develop and uh, leave that uh, that threat there in reserve. And you're just aiming to play bishop b7 and you'll play e5. I mean, black's got just a very decent position here. Um, actually, interestingly enough, the engines were looking at playing queen a8 just to stop bishop b7 there. Um, but then you go rook d8, um, something like bishop a3, for example, and then knight f8. And you're just going to bring the bishop out like that. And black gets developed and uh, solid structure, you know, just, uh, yeah, plenty of play in the position, really. Um, but um, what uh, Leonard did was play queen takes b4. And of course, this is, the, you know, definitely the most ambitious. I mean, you're taking the the easier to defend pawn uh, on b4 and you're just assuming that you can grab this one as well but you're maybe going to get into a, a few awkward pins there now um Aliekin sort of tried to exploit that awkward pin straight away with bishop a3 but the engines don't um uh, don't like that what they wanted was the move just castles keeping this bishop a3 in reserve because in actual fact after queen takes b6 we go bishop a3 hitting the uh, the rook and this is surprisingly awkward very easy to miss as a human player that after rook e8 rook b1 uh, black's actually in some trouble uh, the rook's attacking the unprotected knight on b8 and if you play something like queen c7 or queen a7 it's the same thing i just go knight b5 the queen's got to move away and then knight d6 and we hit the rook on e8 and the knight on b8 so white's just picking up the exchange there actually there's no way after bishop a3 to avoid losing the exchange so yeah queen b4 was really really risky but it's not not 100 percent obvious somehow uh you know how uh, how clear that is there's um yeah it's just a non-standard position this you know with uh the knight unprotected on b8 and the bishop on d8 and uh yeah whenever those things happen yeah you, you know you can get um uh, strange tactics happening but it's also sometimes hard to uh to get really get a grip of them as uh, as a human player so um bishop a3 was played and now queen a5 
castles and rook e8 and that's the point really you know the queen on a5 here is um is uh, kind of safer and you're actually gonna try and take you know the uh, the b6 pawn in some sort of safer way so many possibilities here um Alyekin played uh, rook b1 um bishop b6 and played the move queen b2 and uh, what's the idea here well the idea here is that the um uh the queen is actually a little bit short of squares here so um Alyekin's got the possibility of playing rook a1 or something else and well you can see what Alyekin was uh, was uh, was lining up and uh, you know i mean when you look at it with the engine of course this sort of game you sort of say oh they've been making mistakes all over the place but yeah of course you know Alyekin he doesn't have the the benefit of um, of knowing whether the position's good or not you're just making it up as you go along and you're just sort of having to guess is this good for me or is black hanging on who knows um Queen b2 was played. I mean, actually, there's not really a threat because, um, you know, one of these are uh, hanging. So um, even bishop d7 is possible, according to uh, the engines. But Leonard played the very natural knight bd7. And now a uh, slight inaccuracy here. Uh, apparently, um, bishop b4 first was what the uh, engines want. But knight b5 played. Very natural move from uh, Alyekin. You're sort of uh, teeing up, you know, a knight d6 and a knight g5 here. And something quite stunning uh, happened here because um, uh, bishop c5 is the move that the engines like the best. Very sensible move, just exchanging stuff. Um, basically, you know, in these sort of positions, um, the engines are saying, well, white's got some sort of initiative here, but black's doing fine. I mean, black's solid. But um, Leonard wouldn't be Leonard. He's not going to exchange off pieces, is he? He's um, sort of getting the pieces active. And uh, this move actually allows a, a little tactic. Maybe just stop the video and see whether you can see what Alyekin came up with, because it is quite stunning. And uh, for bonus points, uh, then maybe have a look to see what um, uh, Leonard, uh, what Leonard's uh, counter was. Because in this position, um, well, the thing is, I mentioned this before, the black queen is a little bit short of squares. So Alekin played the move bishop f8 here threatening queen g7 mate, and also allowing rook a1 when the black queen is trapped. Trapped or is it? Well, in actual fact, it isn't actually trapped. Because, uh, well, Leonard could have played played it immediately. He could have played it on the next move. Um, he played the move, the intermezzo. Bishop d4. The Zwischenzug. Always thinking of uh, Natasha and her recent book, Zwischenzug, uh, together with Matt Ball. Uh, so uh, whenever I see this, seeing Zwischenzugs everywhere nowadays. So a little bit of an intermediate move there. What's the point? Well, you're attacking the queen, you're protecting mate on g7, and you're also giving the queen, not c7, but some retreat squares so that the queen can be free if it's attacked by the rook on a1. Very nice little sequence, this bishop f8, bishop d4. So knight fd4, rook takes f8, and, you know, it feels like Alyekin's bringing his pieces into um, into play here, you know, knight c6, whatever. Um, but, um, yeah, there isn't actually anything decisive here. So f3 was played by Alyekin. The engines don't like that at all. They just want you to, um, to yeah, I just go for general play, really. Um, either knight b a7 when you've got some, some pressure, or um, a move like queen c2 as well. You know, just keep tension in the position and um yeah you'll maybe uh maybe uh you know get a pawn back somehow but Alyekin was sort of thinking i'm sure you know oh how can i how can i finish this off so uh f3 knight ec5 knight c6 queen b6 but you know this move f3 has really weakened e3 again so um and if there's no win there then um you know it's, it's just not going to be very good at all i imagine that Alyekin was already thinking about what happened in the game uh, knowing him, uh, but there's no way that it should ever have happened. So he played the move knight e7 check, very aggressive. Um, it's a serious advantage for black now. Um, I mean, white should really be thinking about taking this bishop on c8, because this knight on e7 is quite a way away. But of course, that just means that blacks are pawn up. But queen c2 was played by Lekin. And uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, I don't know if you've uh, been doing your puzzle rush and all your training, you might have uh, have. <laughs> You might sort of be getting the contours of what's going to happen here. Unfortunately, Leonard remained a little bit oblivious somehow, but Queen C2 played. But Bishop B7, I mean, Black's White's really in a lot of trouble here now. I mean, this knight on E7 is trapped. I mean, we're just going Queen D8 or even Rook E8. And uh, yeah, what can he do? 
Well, Aliakim played the move rugby four here, and uh, there were many good moves for Black in this position, but all that Black has to do is to watch out for something, uh, but unfortunately didn't quite manage that, and played the move queen d8, which looks enormously strong, just winning this knight on e7, right? A famous victory in the offing, but here, see whether you can spot it, Aliekin had a, an absolutely gorgeous tactic and the, the move basically that's put this into the uh, the puzzle books that you might come across from uh, time to time. He played the glorious idea, queen takes h7 check and Leonard resigned because after king h7, rook h4 check is checkmate. Um, what could uh, Leonard have played? Well, I mean, after um, rook b4, uh, simply h6 would have been very good. Um, and also f5 was very strong. The engines were just winning all of these with uh, with black. So uh, you just can't do anything. You're going to lose that knight on e7 eventually. So there we are. Crazy game. Interesting uh, opening, um, actually. You know, this uh, c5, d takes c5. And a sharp little struggle there after c5. Um, yeah, I mean, Leonard played it uh, pretty well, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, um, you're going to see this a lot in his games, you know, just, um, yeah, often short of time. I think um, uh, he was a, a bit of a time trouble addict and uh, just missing this um, this idea. Of course, you know, in the 1910s, you didn't have a puzzle rush or anything like that. You know, masters were still sort of discovering uh, these patterns and still, you know, gradually making them their own you know obviously the uh, the top players uh, got to grips with them very quickly the ones below that uh, a little bit more slowly so uh, yeah accidents did happen in those days but still a glorious tactic queen d8 queen h7 check oh, takes rook h4 the knight on e7 blocking the queen's attack of the rook on h4 and delivering mate so there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. Plenty more of this stuff to come. Quite a few losses of Leonard. Thank goodness also quite a few good wins as well. So there we are. Keep your eyes peeled for those videos and thanks very much for watching.